are not prepared. Welcome to another video, guys. Today I'm gonna look at what are the possible best decks after the nerfs actually hit tomorrow. I really do believe that these nerfs are actually going to change the metagame, so we should be seeing some serious shifts in power, especially in some certain decks and archetypes. So stick around to the end if you want to have a better idea of what decks you might want to be playing on the first few days of the new meta. Would be awesome if you drop a like and a subscribe to the channel, but now let's get into the video. So for anyone who still hasn't seen the nerfs, this is what they look like. Kazakh Sun is gonna require you actually play dragons now instead of only having dragons in your deck. Puffer Fist loses one health. The Warrior Quest is gonna require one extra pirate on the last step. Switcheroo no longer swaps attack. And Miracle Grove goes up to 8. From what we see here, it's certain that Ram Druid is gonna take a serious hit on the power level, but it's still probably gonna be a pretty decent deck. Miracle Grove is still an insanely good card, even though it's gonna have to come down a turn later, and Kazakh Sun is probably gonna get dropped out of Druid, because right now it really feels like you don't really have that many good dragons, especially for you to be running them in Druid. Buffer Fist losing 1 health is actually a pretty huge deal, because the 4 health threshold on the early game is pretty hard to deal with, and also having to play 1 extra pirate makes it a lot harder to draw Rakara before turn 6 or 7. Switcheroo is no longer gonna allow BS with Deathwing and the Murlocs. So yeah, all in all, I do believe that the nerves are pretty pretty decent. Even though, obviously, some cards also could have been hit. By the way, pretty nice job at hitting only common cards mostly, huh? But at least we got Kazakhstan and the Quest Warrior, so we are gonna get some dust in the end of the day. Okay, so the main point here is, since Ram Druid is not gonna be as strong, especially against control decks, I really do believe we're gonna be seeing a lot more control decks. Which hopefully is not too many control decks, because ain't nobody got time to play control versus control. Okay, so now let's move down to the actual deck that I think will be really strong, especially in the first few days. The first one is gonna be the current probably best deck out there, which is Naga Demon Hunter, which is an insanely strong deck and games really go fast with it. This deck has an insane amount of damage packed into it, and you can do some pretty pretty crazy combos with Dread Prison Glaive comboed with Multi Strike, which is actually quite the buggy card and you will probably have some pretty bad interactions with it, but yeah, let's hope that one gets patched out as well. Cause right now, if you use multi-strike, attack a minion and use multi-strike again, you actually cannot go face again, which is not at all supposed to be happening. And also if you use multi-strike, attack and then go for Kurtris, you don't have a second swing at all, which is even weirder. But yeah, be careful with that one. Either way, the deck is very powerful, it has only one drop in here, which is the Vicious Slitter Spear, and that makes up for a lot better Drektar plays for ya. We only have one 2 drop as well, which is the Battle Swarm Vanguard. Lady Stano's in here and she can do a lot of damage. Mancrick is also here because you have a lot of card draw in this deck. And we also have room for one Smothering Stirfish, so you can get through Big Boy Taunts and actually go through the face. Maybe this card is actually gonna get dropped after Druid gets toned down, but time will tell. And we also have the Treasure Guard, which is an excellent card draw tool for you. And also sitting at 5 health with a taunt, it can protect your Drektar minions pretty pretty well. We also have Need for Greed in here, which is a pretty good way for you to be drawing a bunch of cards, and obviously Kurtris at the end, as your most expensive card. The deck is basically aggro, but you also have a lot of combo potentials, like I said, mainly with the Dread Prison Glaive and with your multi-strikes, and you can do some serious serious damage really soon. And in some cases, it's actually helpful for the opponent to play big minions for you, so you can hit him in the face twice, as long as you manage to figure out the honorable kill for the weapon. Also Lady Steno can work out as some combo damage for you, but don't be afraid to tempo her out as well as soon as turn 4 or 5 to get some good value trades on the board, because she's basically a Immune. The mulligan for the deck when going first and second for that matter, you're always gonna want your Drektar, Battle Swarm Vanguard is gonna be pretty good, as well as your Naga, and even the weapon most of the time. When going first, Kurtris also might be a good keep for you, but I wouldn't really keep Kurtris and Drektar in the same hand because it's gonna make it a little bit too slow for your early first 3 turns probably. Multi-Strike might make sense in some board-centric matchups, Puffer Fist as well, and if you have Outcast the Spectral Sight, you can keep it too. When on the coin, again, it doesn't change much. So yeah, it's really not that hard to mulligan decently with this deck. The next deck on the list I think is gonna be Quest Hunter, because this deck really suffered a lot from Ram Druids. And with those going down in popularity and power, I do feel that Quest Hunter is gonna be a lot stronger, because they pack a mean punch, and even control decks will not be able to hold off with all of the infinite damage they get at the end after the quest is completed. This deck is also running Beast Stalker Tavish, and again we have Drektar with the Treasure Guards, 
Roster Vipers, which are pretty healthy minions, and also the new Hunter Legendary Raj, which can really do a lot of damage if you manage to combo her with a few spells. By the way, the bug with the barbed nets giving you two quest progressions in certain situations has been fixed, so don't think you're gonna be getting it anymore if you were planning to do so. Mulligan-wise, again, Drektar would be a keep probably always. And Raj is also a decent keep, especially since you probably don't want to get it pulled from Drektar and instantly killed. Candle Shot feels a little bit too high on the list, honestly, I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe so you can get better trades with your Dragon Bane Shot later on. And you basically keep your good, cheap damaging spells, so you can start that quest progression faster. When on the coin, even Explosive Trap becomes a lot more keepable, as well as Tavish. But be careful about the matchup, because in certain matchups it's gonna be better for you to remain with the hero power damage, whereas in other cases it's not gonna be bad for you to spam some animal companions. Next on the list, like I said, Control is gonna be back on the menu, and Control Paladin right now is actually doing a pretty good job as is. So naturally, it's probably gonna be pretty good after the nurse as well. You have some pretty powerful control tools in here, including Equality, comboed with City Tax or with Wild Pyromancer. You obviously have Carol for some board clear as well as damage reduction, Maki Roll and Flash of Light heal you for a bunch. You can discover extra holy spells with Battle of a Car, draw your holy spells with Night of the Anointment. And a pretty disgusting combo is the Righteous Defender, especially when you only have Smite in hand for some serious charge damage. You are running the new Queen Ashara in here as well, so you can get some extra cheap Colossals mainly, and the Garden's Grace is not too hard to get down to 0 too. When going first with this deck, this is what the mulligan looks like, but it really is gonna come down to the particular matchup. When going second, these are the stats. But again, really think about what you will be expecting from the opponent and what you want to be achieving against them as well, in order to actually mulligan correctly. There are quite a few legendaries in this one, so definitely stay away from it if you're low on dust, but yeah, we will probably be seeing a lot more of Control Paladin after the nerfs hit. The other control deck we will see a lot of is gonna be Control Warrior as well, which is also doing okay right now, and it's gonna be even better after Ram Druid bites the dust. I'm assuming that Control Warrior is gonna be the best Kazakhstan deck after that, because you're already running naturally a lot of dragons in this one, but you will still need to fit in a few extra so you can get Kazakhstan reliably, because right now you only have three in here. But you're definitely gonna find room to fit in a few more. Maybe even just a single Amalgam is gonna do it for you instead of, let's say, Shadowhunter Vol'jin. Again, this deck is jam-packed with control tools, and you have all sorts of ways to remove boards, including single target big damage, with your shield slams, including your Anixian Drakes, you have your Shield Shatter 5 damage AoE for basically zero mana, your Brawls, your Rancors, and there's also a ton of armor gain and a bunch of late game tools as well. So yeah, the deck definitely should feel a lot better, and you're probably gonna see a lot of aggro decks out there trying to farm unrefined decks after nerfs too, so this would be a great way for you to farm them. Mulligan wise, again, as a control deck, you will need to think about the particular matchup and what you will need against them, but this is what it looks like when going first, and here are the stats when going second. Again, it's definitely not a cheap deck, but then again, control usually is not cheap anyway, so yeah. And the last deck on the list, I definitely don't recommend to people that are not ready to really put their head into this one, because Boar Priest looks like a tier 3 deck, and the stats are definitely not amazing for it, but top 100 legend, and especially the top 10 legend, is full of Boar Priests, so it really comes down to mastering this deck to make it work. It seems like a complicated deck at first, but it's really not that hard to figure it out. There are some pretty cool interactions with it, including drawing a bunch of cards with Northshire Cleric, Pyromaster and Gift of the Naru, refreshing your mana crystals a few times with your Priestess. You have several decent board removal tools like Zarella, Shadow Word Ruin as well as Light Bomb, and also the Pyromasters should be a good way for you to control the board in the first turns. The trick with the boars here is, you need to have both the boars died and have your amulets of the undying traded at least three times, so one of them resurrects two boars and the other resurrects three. But make sure to use the one that resurrects two boars first, because those are the only death rattle minions you have dead. You can do the boar combo in different ways too, I was actually showing the wrong version so far, because I don't think you want to be running the hero card, but you do want to be running Zola, so you can actually copy an extra boar that way, or an extra pre Priestess, or stuff like that. But yeah, with Zola, you get a little bit more flexibility the way you want to be doing the Elwyn Boar play. So basically, the plan with this deck is 
to get the weapon, but against some opponents you will need to get at least two weapons, because they can armor out of range. But yeah, it's definitely not a simple deck, and I wouldn't advise you to spend your dust on it if you're not prepared to really put your head into this one. Here's what the mulligan looks like when going first, and here's what it looks like when going second. Switcheroos and amulets are pretty important for you to have in your starting hand, so you can start trading away the amulets, and draw a couple of your minions. Hand minions also give you a lot of good card draw. Illuminate's pretty nice, so you can actually get your amulet down to zero. But yeah, I can't really give you any detailed mulligan guide here, because I've actually not played the deck, but I've only seen people play it, so I know how to play better against it. So that's gonna be it for this video guys, hope this helps you figure out what decks you want to be playing when the nerfs hit. Don't forget you can also hire me for some Hearthstone coaching, and you can be sure I will do my best to make you a better Hearthstone player. Thanks for watching, I'm Crystal5 and I'll see you in my next video, or stream.